Penitentiary Academy won. Wait. You got to choose your own part? It's been a long time since we've done this. <laughs> you expect us to believe that? A shrimp like you couldn't take on a stiff breeze, let alone the cops. Hey, so this is a new kid, right? The one that said they are again today. Huh. And they put in the front in our squad? A puny little human that could snap those arms like twigs. You must have really sold the wardens on some dumb story, eh, punk? Hand it up, got him thinking you're some kind of badass. <laughs> yeah, that's gotta be it. Ain't no way you really busted up a whole station by yourself. Kid ain't batting an eyelid. This one's really starting to rub me the wrong way. Hey, fresh meat. I'm only gonna say this one so let's be good. Don't get fresh with me. After all we've seen, we ain't got much left to lose. What do you say we show this brat how we deal with smart mouse here in Penitentia? <laughs> Damn it. Kid's slippery as a fish. Gotta keep a low profile. Sweet ton no jutsu! No, it's a small map. Thank goodness they spawned far away. Uh... This is a bit excessive for a small battle. <laughs> Okay. A lot of units have been released since chapter 10 release, I guess. Pick this, you cheek little. <laughs> Fake being hit to get some space. Dodge by here. Oh, okay. I see we're playing with their food here. You smoothly disengage and sprint away from the fear as prisoners failing fists as fast as you can. Uh, something feels off about this. I always seem... scared. <laughs> damn it! Damn! 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 Why you? Why now? The giants have you surrounded. They have no reason to stop now. And yet suddenly, they seem uncertain, almost afraid. Hold it right there, cadets. Would any of you care to explain the meaning of this? Uh-oh. The giants visibly flinch, and all three immediately snap to attention. Are you not veterans of S -S Squad 26? Have I not told you personally a thousand times? The warmonger's military code strictly forbids interpersonal conflict. Our deepest apologies, Senior Warden, sir. The giants spark their responses and salute so crisply that you would think their lives depended on it. One of the whimpers. As you can see, the other cadets can be a little boisterous. I hope they do not agree you too roughly. I apologize for my tardiness. You must be our new squad mate, Arison. Who are you? I always wanted to make really quick to jump the gun there, but sure. Mary? You would confess your love to a soldier you have only just met. Huh. How did you know that surprise offenses are my greatest weakness? 
Mm, well, um, I'm not certain I'm prepared to take such a step. We should start as friends then. <laughs> well, um, I mean, I am started. Yes, you are. You not due to have the warmongers. I am the overseer of the squad 26 and the most senior commander currently stationed on site. Yasuyori gives a model salute before turning his gaze upon you once more. Welcome to the Narima Warmongers Educational and Correctional Facility, Penitentia Academy. So this place is just a prison school. It's pretty good on me if you've seen it. Uh, you're the senior overseer? What's the point of this place? Is it to get some uh, dinky scenes out of the way, just like in the army? Well, I suppose if you want to squat on me, I mean, I suppose there's no harm in telling you that much. After all, I have been instructed to treat you no differently to any other recruit. We warmongers have constructed this facility to temper new recruits like you to the finest army in all of Tokyo. So you want to lead soldiers who will obey any order. We will require proper soldiers to fill the ranks. We have no need for berserkers. Brute strength means nothing to our war efforts if it is not tempered by discipline. Okay, so there's a distinction to me between berserkers and warmongers. So that's the reason for the objections. Is everyone you took locked up in here? That's enough of the questions, cadet. As I said, I have an offer to treat you the same as any other recruit, and that extends to insubordination. Minus one point for inappropriate behavior, and another for disorderly attire. As punishment, you will perform 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 pull-ups, and then a 10-mile run. Too easy, is that all? Oh, and one more thing. I may have neglected to mention that inmates are expected to carry sandbags while performing exercises. I suppose three will suffice for a new recruit. Yes, Yori offers you a weighty looking backpack. And what if I refuse? In that case, I would extort you to the exit and bid you leave. So you just let me go? Of course. There is no place in warmongers for soldiers lacking in vigor. This is no special exception for your sake. Anyone may leave at any time, if they so wish. Uh. Uh. Then why don't they just leave? <laughs> what? Uh, there is something missing in this picture, obviously. The giant strumming causes the floor to shake. What's so scary about leaving? How about a cadet? Have you had enough of Pen and Academy? There's no business here. So my take that you are content to remain with us. Then you're expected to obey your superior officer's orders. Now, Squad 26, as your overseer, I hereby commence training. Sir, yes, sir! Wait, what have you done with R19? Tell me where you put Jacob. Well, I don't know about his other friends. Usually, the admissions process would include a thorough review of each student's ideals and backgrounds. However, in special cases like yours, the Academy sometimes chooses to waive. <clears throat> Minus one point for insubordination. For that, you have earned yourself 10 sprints. Hell yeah, fearing cadet! Any other New Yorker would be begging for mercy by now. Despite carrying a backpack tw twice the weight of giants, which are twice as heavy as yours, yes, Yori isn't even breaking his sweat. <laughs> ah, this is nothing. That war face doesn't scare me, cadet. Work on it! Walls and close camera on all, on all sides, but not are tall enough to be much of an obstacle to a giant. Can really just walk out the door? Why don't they just leave? <laughs> Too tired to think. Uh, no. More. <laughs> One of the giants toppled mid lap with an early with an earth shaking crash. Uh, uh, go on. Oh dear, you must be careful to keep yourself hydrated. Yes, here grabs a bucket of water set aside for this very purpose and dumps its contents over the bottom of the giant. I need some too. Thank you, Senior Warden, sir. 
The giant shouts his gratitude with absolute sincerity. There's something off about this. Correct. This might seem strange to the normal populace, but this is the way we do things in the military. Yasuyori's tone is cold. This is a mnemonic expression unchanging. Something feels really wrong. You're free to return home. Provided, that is. You have a home to return to. For just a moment, you catch some sort of emotional flickering in Yasuyori's eyes. What did I just see? Minus one point for unnecessary ch chit chat. Everyone on your feet! Our cadet here has been earned has earned you one more set. <laughs> and scene is collapsing. Hmm. Pulse looks normal, and there's nothing unusual on the electrocardiogram camera readings either. Looks like a textbook case of physical exhaustion. I'm guessing it might be Miniaki. Shocks the body if it's not used to it, you see. Hmm, of course. Take a deep breath, Sergeant. Cool that head, but maybe it's just Yasuo as usual. Alrighty then. One shot of Doc- Oh, it's Shenong! Alrighty then. One shot of Dr. Shenong's special human only nutrient cocktail. Coming right up. Open your eyes. Link. Oh, you're finally awake. The first thing you see on opening your eyes is an infirmary ceiling, and a Therian clad in a white coat, holding the biggest syringe you have ever seen. <laughs> I hate needles. Good morning to you too. Though I've not seen many mornings with the moon shining this brightly outside. <laughs> This is Penitenti Academy's infirmary. Do you remember what happened? You lost consciousness in the middle of training. Only a second-rate soldier would collapse with such a simple, low-intensity workout. You clearly don't meet the sadness to serve. I suggest you return home and cease waiting your time. Kairu! My apologies for bothering you so late at night, Doctor. Please, excuse me. Well... He could sure stand to make a holiday or five. Who are you? Could have the name of my savior. Dr. Shenong of the Warmongers Biochemical Warfare Corps. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Check out those horns. Mm hmm. You look a little flushed. Perhaps you have a fever. Well, one shot from this baby will prick you right up. Maybe not. Personal guarantee. How about it? Anyway. I hope he has learned his lesson. Maybe next time he'll think twice before running one of his own cadets ragged. Or perhaps not. I would imagine he wants nothing more than for you to get away as fast as you can. Pushing you away is probably the best way he can think of. I still don't get it. Our friend Yasuyori isn't the only one either. Everyone here is in the same accursed boat. We all realize that none of us have homes to return to. Rather, we've forgotten that, and now we've remembered. Uh, so the step that was waived is the main difference. I thought it had something to do with that. The step was uh, giving them their memories from uh, previous loops. Pin attention is all we got. It's the only place we belong, and if we ever lost it, well, let's just say a bunch of rejects with no place to go back to anymore. Stepping outside of the infirmary, he asks Yuri glances around to confirm that no one is watching. Then he carefully takes a photograph from his breast pocket and stares at it, becoming lost in thought. Hmm. Ashikara, Wakan, Daisuke. Oh, my friends. My friends, I'm so sorry. Teardrops spatter on the photograph, warping the carefree grin of the Canisarian in the center, Yasuyori himself. If I could rejoin you, I would. In a heartbeat. 
but I can't. Some things can't be taken back. Oh, look, a new permanent quest. Hey, it's the, the giant one. I'll write it eventually to him. Alright, Penitentiary Academy too. They're floating. <laughs> Don't mean to ruin the moon, but yeah, their their feet are definitely not touching the ground. I remember the days when it was easy to smile. When I still thought I deserved my friends. The days when I was ignorant of the truth. I wish I could return. But I can't. Not anymore. Not now that I've learned who I truly am. I always believed that we would be friends forever. And I am sure that they believe the same. No, they're disappearing. I believe that we are bound together by friendship. And that no matter what, we can never hurt one another. How naive I was. Little did I know, deep inside, I was something else entirely. But then I remembered what I truly am. A miserable creature who would cut down those he once called friends. So I fled. I couldn't bear the thought of my friends learning about my true nature. I didn't want to hurt anyone ever again. He slaughtered his friends from the Yogi Academy. You remember that? That's why I can't return to the place I called home. I have found a place for myself here, with those like me. We have an understanding here. We are all beasts who could devour each other at any moment. This is the only place left that will accept me for what I am. Whether I like it or not, I have nowhere else to go. To safeguard this final sanctuary is now my duty and my desire. But even so, one hope remains in my heart. My friends, please think of me no longer. Let the monster who turned against you stay forgotten. Hmm. Somewhere in Nakano Ward. Well then. Deep within a certain school in Nakano Ward, where dark deeds are d conducted behind closed doors, lies a safe house with the agents, a clandestine guild of spies and ninja. The agents who supposedly dissolved that this place also doubles as our headquarters as a secret to all but a handful of elite agents. Strange. Hmm. A volley of bullet strike downs as a firing range from Osei's golden pistol, hitting the target's vital uh, points with pinpoint accuracy. Oh yeah, Miniaki's an agent too. Mmm. You never cease to impress Agent 057. I don't think a scholarly type like me could ever hope to compete. Save your flattery, Doctor. Our round of target practice will not save Tokyo. Now then, to business. Is there a goal to save Tokyo? I believe your bows are in possession of the intel that can be of use to each other. I would imagine our employer has been nudging you just as eagerly to gather material for their little surprise. Although, well now, who on earth could your real employer be? The warmongers to the rest, the invaders to the south, or perhaps... Ah, you're overthinking things. All I want is to see this matter brought to a proper conclusion. These loops will not suffice. 
I want to be there to watch as this Tokyo achieves an ending in true sense. And you believe the goal justifies being a triple agent? <laughs> Do you, don't you lose track of that after a point of time? <laughs> Look who's talking, Agent 057. Aren't you doing much of the same thing? It doesn't look to me like you're working for any of the three true guilds. And by my own rough, I see. Very well. Let us return to the topic at hand. Am I correct to suppose that this latest incident could very easily end up causing you to a great deal of trouble as well? The three true guilds have established a series of treaties over the course of the past loops with the goal of suppressing tactics that could force the game to a stalemate. After all, if the loops are forced to repeat as soon as they began, the game could never progress. One such pact is that they must refrain from direct contact with the trophy until the game reaches its final stages. But this time, that pact has brought about something unexpected and potentially disastrous. Who would have thought the trophy would leap into the fire of his own accord? Osei's allusion to the World Representative's trophy, the summoner currently held in Penitentia Academy, is quite deliberate. I presume he intended to bring the three true guilds into conflict. That by stirring the pot, he could create an opportunity to gather more information. The summoners seem to know how to play their underdog. Providing chaos is the optimal strategy for the powerless. Plus, we have to consider that the three true guilds are not monoliths. The individual world representatives all have their own agendas. However, none of that adequately explains the warmonger's actions. I expect that, as you suggest, the other guilds must be investigating their intentions. Hmm. Well, they only took him in. That's the thing, even though he came in of his own volition, they had the opportunity to release uh, me, but they didn't. But so far, they didn't seem willing to respond. They will be seen as truly intending to break the treaty at this rate. It's as though they're trying to avoid outside interference at any cost. Exactly, Agent 57. This is only a rumor I heard, but... It seems the warmongers are holding some kind of rogue element in their training facility out of Penitentia Academy. So that would be in reference to Mononobi, most likely. Oh? They say that something has never happened in any past loop as being hidden in Penitentia. The warmongers are, or rather, Penitentia is doing all it can to keep it from prying eyes. And so they're probably trying to smooth this over quietly. You stuck your neck out this time, Doctor. This is more than curiosity. I've been applying myself more than usual, I admit. This one's a little personal, you see. I treasure my students and colleagues more than you can imagine. That's the truth. Hmm. Yeah, they did capture... Actually, the yogi use have been spared, haven't they? <laughs> I wonder what uh, he's referring to in that case. Uh, maybe he's regained the memories of the past times they were slaughtered, just like uh, Yasuyori. Don comes to Penitentia Academy, just as it does to the outside world. Rise and shine, cadets. Make those beds and report to the mess hall. Once breakfast is over, it'll be time for another morning training. Hmm? Why aren't you made your beds yet? Snap to it! Ugh, I slept like a log. Can't believe it's been ready a day. I wonder where they are. You look around as you make your bed and change your clothes. It seems you have quite a few other squad mates, more than just the three who picked the fight with the previous day. But I haven't seen the last of that. Just got a grin bear. Hey, fresh meat. Your name's Arathan, yeah? One of your fellow squad members flags you down on your way to the mess hall. You know who you're talking to, Fresh Meat? This year is the leader of our squad, so show some respect. Hey, numbskull, go through your way around somewhere else. This kid ain't gonna suck up to no one. Besides, I ain't gonna have their guard up after that little spat yesterday. Relax, kid, we're on your side. We're all birds of the feather here. Birds of a feather? That's right. See all of us here? 
We've all realized what we really are, just like you. The giant claps on your shoulders, confident that you can read between the lines. Those three picked the fight with you yesterday have barely been here longer than you. They all settle down. They just gotta take the time to make peace with who they are. So they're taking it out on you as easy targets. But they ain't special cases. No, it's just like that one they first brought me in. We got some guts, kid. I'd be a whimpering wreck after what you went through yesterday. But you look right as rain. So, shook you up a bit, right? Well. You there! Report to the mess, all cadets! I think he's referencing to the memories there implanted with, but I'm not entirely sure. Thus, gotta get moving. You don't want to get on the overseer's bad side on your second day here. Mm. After morning mess, you return to the train grounds along with the rest of the cadets. We hereby recommence your morning exercise, cadets. First, a light run around the perimeter. Begin! <laughs> it's just shaky. Hey, new kid. Who's that, right? One of your squad mates call out to you. It's one of the giants who fought with you the previous day. Ah, uh, sorry for yesterday. We all are. The squad captain came around right after you and gave us an earful for it. Told us you're all in the same boat and that we should look out for each other because the outside world sure ain't gonna. I know what wise words when I hear him. Shouldn't have lashed out you like that. The giant flashes an awkward smile and proffers an enormous hand for you to shake. Wasn't it supposed to be a horrible place here? It's nothing like I imagined. This isn't just camaraderie. There's something wrong about all this. It's like they expect something from me. You know, it's still kind of hard to believe the memories are real. But it feels kind of nice knowing I got friends here who understand. Folks who've seen this kind of thing I've seen. That means I don't gotta bear this place alone, yeah? You get what I mean, right? Right? Okay. Despite a strained smile, a dark shadow remains in the giant size. Yeah, it's definitely that. <laughs> the camaraderie is because of that, uh, of those memories. They're bonding because they suffer a pain that no one else can understand. What's with that smile? Come on, you kid. You can tell. What's your friends, your friends did you? You two. No chatting during training. The giant panics and immediately abandons conversation to resume jogging. Listen up, cadet. What I am about to tell you is not friendly advice. This is a warning. If you want to avoid friction with your squad mates, I advise eating it. Everyone in squad 26, including me, has undergone a special procedure regarding their memories. If it were known that it had been waived for you, it would surely breed confusion and resentment among the squad. If you have no intention of leaving Penitentiary Academy as I have suggested, I must insist that you maintain your silence while others inquire about your memories. Memories from past loops, you mean? About Tokyo descending into war? And killing our friends and neighbors? Remember all the f battles we fought, amigos? We are now living in eternal war! Indeed. What do you suppose it would do to someone who recalled uh, they once fought to the death with their dearest friends? The trauma soldiers are subjected to during warfare is so great that many never successfully readjust to normalcy. Some eventually return to military services, but those who fail to find a place for themselves often meet tragic ends. So you do know. Then I suppose there is no need for me to conceal anything from you. We, the soldiers of the warmongers, Comprise those who have recalled the war in Tokyo that never ends. We have been forced to remember that we once slaughtered those we hold dear. Although it goes forgotten for by most, this city is the stage of an eternal battle that consumes all of its citizens. Friends turn on friends, family kills family. This war is nothing but an endless, repeating nightmare in which everyone is forced to take sides and then destroy each other. How much of this war do you recall, Cadet? 
you know, that was the primary memory that we experienced through as a thought. I remember dying a lot. I don't remember killing anyone though. And I don't remember the context. You recall the memories you saw in Azathoth's garden? Let us see. It must be comforting to have no memories of being the aggressor. To learn that you would raise your blade against your dearest friends, even if you do not know why. That knowledge would break anyone. How could you live outside of these walls knowing that you truly are a monster? Even if you don't know why. So their memories aren't complete? Is the process of lactive? Maybe. After learning what I know now, I no longer have any right to set foot in the Yogi Academy. Yes, he already closes his eyes and turns away from you. Now! Present yourselves! Squad 26! Next is combat training! Your squad arrives at a training area with another squad, uh, where another squad is still in the middle of their combat exercises. It seems another squad is still engaged in combat training cadets. Ah, uh, but of course. Squad 25 rec received an influx of new re recruits recently. I believe they were assigned a new combat instructor as well. Hmm. No. It couldn't be! Hey, it's a Varga! Well, even the other one is Daisuke and Mr. Varga too. What are you? Why are you here? I thought it was clear that Varga was part of the Warmongers. At least that's the. Uh, I thought it was in his profile that it said that. Does uh, I guess Yasuyori is not aware of that fact? Monotoboy. Penitentiary Academy 3. What is this world? Nothing more than what is dictated by the beliefs of majority within a closed space. Beliefs are neither inherently stronger nor weaker than others. The only order they have is one imposed upon them by a hierarchy. What do you choose? Love over violence? Wealth over and power over love? Or perhaps violence over wealth and power? Thus, this problem resolves to be the simple ordering of a finite number of values. Beliefs cannot be strong or weak. However, when differing beliefs combine to create a world, then scope is created for strength and weakness to come into being. Even so, they are decided not by what is ideal or what is right, but simply by the stability of the resulting system. Such is the case of the Warmongers, the conquerors of the Western Tokyo and Penitentiary Academy, their forward base and educational facility. If this place could be considered a world unto itself, its strength is undeniable. Its might has been enough to crush the berserkers of Ikebukuro, who pride themselves on boasting the city's greatest warriors. The information disparity between the two guilds is clear, but the true reason for the Warmongers' victory lies elsewhere. After all, there is no great difference between the two guilds' military might. It is the Warmonger's strength as a holistic organization that has sealed their victory. Each and every soldier in the Potentia Academy bears the same scars, and all firmly believe that they can never be understood by those outside, beyond the walls of the world. So, their memories are the one uniting thing? All of the Warmongers? Wow, that's really fucked up. And fitting for the name, too. Uh, I guess it's just everyone pretty much has PTSD. And can connect to each other in that way. For their beliefs to be challenged, and penitentiary to fall, they would have nothing left. Or so they are convinced. The soldiers of the warmongers do not fear the loss of the home they have found here. They fear that their comrades, those who share their scars, should lose that home. They fought not for their beliefs, but for the friends they have found who share those beliefs. For this cause, they would gladly martyr themselves, for they value the closed world of penitentiary higher than their own lives. The more attacks from the outside 
uh, they weather, and the more their comrades fall, the stronger they become. It really is a, a difference in philosophy that has made them more resilient, though um, harder they're hit. But with each life given its name, the world systems grows ever stronger and more formidable. And that is only the first of the two mechanisms serving to heighten their, their system's stability. Furthermore, among the 23 worlds connected to this Tokyo, there is one that shares a system with Penitentia Academy. Its name is Eldorado, the City of Gold. Oh, I see. If I remember correctly, in Chapter 9 they said something like, uh, their world is upheld by sacrifice. <laughs> Council President Amaterasu, um, really great work cheering the Emergency Guild Summit. I think he was, but I fear it has left me terribly drained. I need to shut myself away and recharge. Gracious, the other world representatives do prattle on. It's as though they care not for one's perspective but their own. It makes one think that none of the other worlds have even begun to understand the value of preserving harmony. So, um, what did you decide in the end? There are two counts on which we cannot help but think the warmongers have sought to break our accord. First, in their attack upon the crafters in the neutral territory in Oto Ward. And second, in failing to provide adequate justification for taking the trophy prisoner in Narima Ward. We have elected to dispatch Michael, Horace, and Corpiker to seek an answer from them directly. I believe they will head for Corpiker's home portal at Ojimachi Academy in Kita Ward soon. Ojimachi Academy, Kita Ward. Hmm. We have been left to hold the fort upon their return, and to be honest with you, I'm happy to let them take care of it. I, I see. It sounds like all our strongest fighters are on the case. That means we don't have to do anything, right? Anyway, um, I wanted to ask. I'd arranged to meet a friend, so, uh, is it okay if I leave now? My friend is in crafters has a new ra rocket to test, and I finished up all my work for, for the students' council, so... I would permit you if I could, but I fear you might find yourself caught up in something unfortunate. Our sources suggest that the incident in Otoward is intimately connected to the current crisis. Huh? As my assistant, you should know Penitentia Academy in Nareem Ward. Do you, Oz? A bit, yes. Uh, I've um, heard a few rumors here and there. And are you aware that the warmongers have installed one of their inner circles, a world representative, as it said? Um, no, I did not know that. My apologies. They are like me in nature, for they are as the sun to the world. And yet, they are very much unlike me in that aspect. For their world is a world of brother's son, and a system that seeks sacrifice in order to sustain them. Both siblings at once banish her and banished. At the mention of siblings exiling siblings, a shadow comes over Amaterasu's brow. The missing piece that connects the attack on the crafters and the incident in Narima. Is both the world representative of El Dorado and the head of Penitentiary Academy, the Smoking Year. Mm. So there's gonna be more elements of Tuscatli Poco. We already know for sure Tuscatli Poco was responsible for uh, Hombre Taker's assault in the crafters uh, Oto Ward. Technical Academy. The Scatly Poker seems to be behind uh, our custody, too. <laughs> well, they seem to be enjoying themselves. No, you can't be! Yes, you already struts at the sight of the cadets already occupying the training area, and ducks behind one of your giant squad mates. Hmm. What's wrong? That should just about do it for this morning's trainings. Good work, squad. Thank you so much, Ko. I mean, instructor. Let's get this cleaned up. We don't want to keep the next squad waiting, do we? What next squad? Ah, it's you. Can't escape. Uh, Daisuke's spot a vision. 
Spotting your wedding, one of the uh, turdly whips the wrestling mask from his pocket and pulls it over his head. <laughs> hey, my soul brother! That's you, isn't it? What are you doing here? Uh, right back at you. I was right. It's sort of to see you again, soul brother. I, the, I mean, tourist mask, am overjoyed beyond words. Taurus mask lowers his voice to whisper in your ear. Soul brother, are you perhaps being captured too? Uh, wait, what do you mean, you two? You're doing the same thing? We can't talk here, soul brother. Meet me in the rear courtyard during lunch and recess. Taurus mask brings you up to speed on everything that has happened thus far. The berserkers have been their only targets. Students started disappearing from Yogi too, one after another. Okay, so that's why Miniyaki was considering it personal. The wrestling and sumo clubs were hit the worst, but even outside that, some of the empty spaces were where our friends used to be. Ah, oh, that is really... Things are getting kind of morbidly sad. We teamed up with Snow and Cloth to try and figure out how to take action, but they got to us first and brought us here. They've got no idea what a surprise it was to find our friends at the other end, breaking here as soldiers and instructors. There are still some account for though, the Sumo Club, among others. And on top of that, not one of them has been kept here against their will. They all want to be in this place. So I've seen. Apparently you can go home whenever. Right. So we need a way to convince the others to up and bust out of here. And I think I've got one. You just gotta remind them that they have friends waiting for them outside. Because the power of friendship will always prevail. <laughs> I think that's a bit of exactly what the problem is, Taurus Mask. So, for now, I'm acting like a good little soldier while I try and sniff out what's going on here. Alright, thank goodness you're here with me. R right? Who cares what memories they showed me? Who cares about some battle that ha happened? Where I killed... <laughs> Taurus mask visibly launches, and he begins to tremble. Hey, stay with me! Snap out of it! I'm... I'm fine, Soul Brother. Don't forget, I'm Taurus Mask, the superhero. And heroes never lose, right? So... I'm gonna get everyone back to Yogi safely, even if it means I've got to stay behind. What are you on about? You think you aren't coming with us? <laughs> of course not, Soul Brother. <laughs> of course not. They haven't got to me yet. At that moment, you hear footsteps approaching. You and Taurus mask us, exchange glances. Better make yourselves scarce, Skull Brother. Can't let them discover us. Until next time. I know that giant. That's my squad mate. I want to go home. I want to go home. I gotta get home. I gotta get back to school. My friends are there. The giant stares at a crumpled photograph, wet with tears, held in one enormous hand. They're... They're nice to me here. They treat me good. But... Here's not where I need to be. Hey, you are right. You really wanna go home? Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been listening, huh? No. Oh, who cares? Listen. Just don't uh, tell the squad captain about this, alright? Keep your mouth shut. Don't worry, I get it. We got friends still out there. Hey, so you. That is good enough for you, Cadet. Y yes, Yori. Since when were you? Get your hands off me! The other members of the squ squad 26 restrain the giant's arms from behind. What are you doing? There's no need to be rough. That is, cadet. We mean you no harm. You have the right to leave at any time. I'll leave here? No, I... No! The time has come for you to choose. Will you leave for an behind, or will you stay? I'll, I'll stay! Please! Let me stay! I ain't got nowhere else to go! 
What just happened? I know I got folks waiting out for, there for me, but how can I face them like this? <laughs> now will I ever remember what they've done. I'm a monster. S stop it. Don't look at me like that. I'm still one of you, okay? I'm not a traitor. <sighs> I'm, starting, I'm starting to understand. This is what seems so wrong. Finally, you put your finger on the feeling of deep, profound wrongness that has nagged you at all you since you first arrived here. Every gaze is filled with a harrowing guilt. Every glance begs complicity, pleading for recognition and acceptance. Please, Sergeant! I need more training! I never want to think this way again! Understood, Cadet. I will lodge a request with the Commander. This time, we will conduct a much more thorough recollection of your memories. I hope that'll leave me to your concerns. They want more? Holy fucking shit. The thing that broke them is also ultimately the only thing that is upholding them now. That's super fucked up. Yes. Yes, it does. Thank you, Sergeant. Thank you. The giant is led away by the other members of the squad, staring at the ground all the while. Wait. That's it? You're giving up? What else do you want me to do? I ain't got no hope to go back to anymore. Help me. Please, anyone. You gotta help me. You stretch your hand out, only to find yourself rebuffed by Yasuyori and the rest of your squad mates. This isn't right. Why are you doing this? You must have realized by now that we have been observing your every move, Cadet. Not a single inch of Penitentiary Academy is safe from our commander's power. Yes, your eyes flick toward the multitude of mirrors stationed around the station, uh, the grounds of the school. Don't mean you're listening in this whole time. Indeed, Cadet. Do not presume your co-conspirator will escape justice either. I'm sure the other instructors will be. Detaining him in short order. I need not even lift a finger. Then, as with your squad mates just now, they will escort him before the commander. The thing that's breaking them is also the thing that they are now happily, well, quote unquote, happily aligning their identities with. That is so fucked up. They're stuck in this pit and now they want to just stay in that pit. They feel that guilt that they feel is just preventing them from wanting to escape it. And he will reawaken yet more with memories of the battle that took place in this Tokyo. We are well aware that everyone in this facility possesses memories of homes they wish to return to. Indeed, they, the more precious they hold these memories, the, title, the tighter their awakened past binds them here. Rather elegant, don't you think? This system is the linchpin that holds the warmongers together. You're talking about total surveillance in this day and age. Not at all. This is nothing so inhumane. After all, everything these mirrors see is public information, accessible to soldiers of all ranks. So, it's basically the internet. Now you see, in this place, once every movement is visible to all, and once every darkness, uh, every dark secret is public knowledge. Under these conditions, the only option our inmates have is maintaining harmony in accord with others. Penitentiary's Academy is not a society of total surveillance, but a society of mutual validation. R Realize you have no power here, cadet. So if you wish to return to your home, please, after me. Hmm. Is that not what you want, Arison? Uh, you've got it all wrong. That's not what I came here for. I'm here to help my friends. I'm here to return a favor. And I'm here to save the one I love. But I'm not dumb. I know that's not enough. So that's why. Why you would? Surely you do not intend to fight us all. 
Or are you saying you find fault in our way of life? Things don't have to be this way. You have other choices. That much I know for sure. I don't share these memories you have, but whatever horrible things you saw, you can't let them be your prison. You don't share? Wait, you're kidding me, right? You little. The eyes of your squad mates, so kind to you yesterday, now glare at you threatening from all around. So you reveal to yourself as an outsider, completely of your own accord. Allow me to ask you one more time, cadet. Am I to assume you have no intention of leaving Penitentiary Academy in peace? Fang's beard, Yasiori, and the other soldiers of the Warmongers look at you with rage in their eyes. Do you truly believe you can defeat us, cadet? Our general has told us otherwise. He claims you cannot possibly defeat the Warmongers, and yet, and not once, in any loop, have you succeeded. Maybe. But I'm gonna win this time! I've got a new truck up for the sleeve. Right, those on. At your words, ring upon your finger shines with a brilliant light. Shan -da -da! Oh look, he has a new circle thing. You got that right, master? Just leave it to your favorite little bubbler. Penitentiary Academy Command Room, Narima Mord. <laughs> A man standing among a multitude of mirrors with different locations and penitentiary displayed on each pod's surface. He cackles as he gazes into one of them. Upon it is your face. What is this? A declaration of war? He would declare war upon me, my other half. And what's more, you actually believe you can win. Oh, but war must th be thus. One can hardly wage war with an enemy with no strength of mind, or arm, or spirit. Truly, it could have been no other way. My other half, for you, and only you, are my destined foe. How gloriously nostalgic, how wonderfully terrible our war is, and now the stage is set for us once more. The shadow rides on Chain's form to reveal the ranking commander of the Penitentiary Academy. <laughs> for I am Tuscalipoca, one of the seven leaders of the Warmongers. And here and now, I proclaim that my long-awaited war with Kuskat, Kus, oh my God, Quetzalcoatl has begun. Flag flying over the battlefield. One. Multiplication brings discord. Propagation brings strife. As a species grows. Its own numbers becomes its greatest enemy. Eventually, it turns upon itself. War is inevitable. As long as the world turns, its inhabitants will do battle upon it. That is the system of this world, and the lesson I have learned the most painful way of it all. Once, I made my home among these lofty peaks of Penglai. Long ago, this land was drowned beneath a great flood that spared only our two great ancestors. From those siblings, all of this world was born. Okay, so this is Shenong. The Great Mother gave us form and breathed life across the land. Life flourished, and it continued to spread even after the Great Mother had long left us. Having taken up her mantle, I rejoice in its purity and its simplicity for a time. But then came plague, famine, and as the inhabitants of this land became conscious of their limited resources, war. I still remember the first time I felt the pangs of starvation. In those days, I would have sunk to any depth, not to alleviate my own suffering, but to lessen that of those closest to me. I am sure that all must have felt the same. Thus, our world was engulfed by war. Society split apart, and the strong devoured the weak. So it has continued until our numbers thin beyond all recognition. 
The history of this world is a tale of endless conflict. With each new day, the heavens are torn open anew, and the aurora streams through the clouds to portend the coming battle. Beneath that fluttering banner I ran, again and again, and yet each time I failed to save a single life. I clung desperately to the only thing I could believe in, uplifting my world from suffering with the pestle and the plow. I had faith that our eventually salvation lay in the development of agriculture and medicine. Still, I watched as more succumbed to the plague, famine, and war. More and more and more. I imbibed poisons into my own body to distinguish them from medicines. I set my own arms to work plowing the fields. For so long I labored, and then, at last, I collapsed alone in the fields of Feng Lai, with agony writhing in my guts. The other inmates have called you out to the rear courtyard under the pretext of combat training, only to start to beat you up. One of the giants sinks his fists into your stomach. Outnumbered and overpowered, you collapse to the ground. Get it now, outsider. Why don't you run on home now that you've learned your lesson? And you call yourself our squad mate. Try coming back when you can remember the hell we went through. I mean, I know it's like uh, an unimaginable hell to slaughter your friends, but you know, reliving your own murder by your friends through many different ways is, should also be in its own way traumatizing. <laughs> ah, master, are you alright? Little Solomon. Hey, you seen this? The kid's just staring in space and mumbling. Think we finally broke him? Come on, Master! Get up! You can take these thugs for breakfast! Let's try out our new power on them and make them beg for mercy! Remember, Master? It's time to post that super move Musashi taught us! As Little Salmon speaks, your rings begin to shine. Our new power? Several days after you delved deep into the old skill building with Fukumi and reunited with Salomon, you brought your fluffy little butler to see Musashi, the mercenary for hiring squatting, uh, for hire squatting on the Crafters campus in Kumata. Fancy seeing you back here so soon. Something good happened. Seems like you got a whole new spring in your step while you're away. Yeah, well, I don't know where to begin, right, little Salomon? Right. <laughs> Looks like you've made up. Quite so, old chap. Quite so. Now, what business do you have with this old sport? What? I keep coming back to what you said. It's kind of been bothering me. What I said, eh? Can't say our call. Mmm. Ah, I see. You refer to the words we exchanged when we sparred. Faith alone, however, is not enough. You cast your mind back to the day you first crossed blades with Musashi in the Kamata schoolyard. For the first time, you managed to call upon two different kinds of severing, and yet Musashi still defeated you with these. <laughs> right you are! I guess we did that at that, so I suppose you've come to ask about what you're lacking, eh, old bean? If that's the case, you can hardly turn down someone recommended by Shuichi himself. Hmm, that's right. Just fatten up our pockets a bit and you can learn all you need to know for Rama Real Swords Master. Okay, old chum. Back straight, Ice Ward. Now show us those two swords of yours, you what? Hmm. Alright, I remember. I called out to little someone just like this. Seems 
seems like there was some intermissions that we didn't see. Speaking of intermissions, uh, apparently the the dungeon quests supposed for Yolks of Thoughts, the AK ones that were, uh, you know, not the dungeon itself, uh, take place between chapters uh, nine and ten. They weren't translated, so <laughs> we're missing a bit of context. If there's any, who knows? Just as they did during your previous spell, your hands now grip two swords. Your sacred artifact and a flickering shadow, imbued with the power to sever distance and gravity. Ah, there we go. That's proper dual wielding. Now, let's show you our secret to wielding two swords at once. Indeed. Look well. Observe our motions and copy them if you can. And don't be a blank about it, old sport. Why, well, there's no telling what could happen if to you if flounder or what. Yusashi clasps his hands together as though in prayer, and you carefully mimic the motion. The ring on your hand and the shadow draw closer and closer until they overlap. And... Uh, what's happening? Ugh, I can't move! Champion work, all chap! You're rather a dab hand at this. Golly, jolly good thing too. Or we'd be scraping you off the upholstery. Now remember, this is your very last taste in the hole. Don't even think about using it unless you've really got no choice. I do not understand. Come on, Master! Let's give him the old one too with our new two one technique. Sha! Uh. Sorry, little someone. We should save it. We shouldn't be using on these jumps. Ugh. Learn your lesson, kid. By the time my alarm rings tomorrow, I want you with your bags packed and out of here. Master? Master! Hey, you little master! Why don't you say that? Ugh. I just gotta get up. <sighs> <laughs> ah! Stay with me! Master! Please! Anyone! Help us! Mm -hmm. eh? I remember you! What are you? He's, uh, I forget what the significance is that he's underneath the summary circle now as opposed to uh, a phone. Summer in Rapungi, not to ward. <coughs> Never fear, my leash. Your favorite foxy lady will save you. Oh, just a silly little dream. Hmm. Where is this? Who am I? Ah, oh, yes. How could I forget? I'm the one and only Hawkman. Mr. Talkman, good morning! Did you sleep well? After everything that happened last night, I thought. Last night? Well, questions for later. Anyway, Shalottle, can you explain what has been done with my bedroom? Wait, oh, now I remember. Hawkman recalls the night when Tokyo Casino was turned upside down by an unscheduled raid by the tax office. <laughs> A self destructing transport device ensured her escape. But the center to a random location was only clothes on her back. <laughs> Tax evasion and money laundering. My fluffy rump. They're just making excuses to clean me up. Those beastly vultures. I knew exactly where everything was hidden. It was like they knew where to look. Did you take the all the way with this, invaders? A fox with a grudge is the worst enemy you'll ever make. <laughs> Mistress, please calm yourself. Remember, anger is bad for the skin. I've ruined some common herbal tea. Please drink some before you break out into spots. Huh. Huh. My, Shalottle, have you been brushing up your brewing? Mmm, that's better. They press Hawkman. You've gotten yourself out far worse, Grapes 4. Your liege would think nothing of this. They're right, Mistress. At times like this, we should look on the right side, just like Garrison. Oh, so Shalottle, 
Don't be them. I was talking about my very first leash. Now she was a woman that even I could respect. Strong, fearless, and wonderfully wicked. Ah, good memories. Although she was reluctant to show her true colors to anyone other than yours truly. She even convinced her to call her the Great Mother. Can you believe it? <laughs> well, she always was good at hiding her claws. I was always her most faithful servant, and yet she sold me straight down the river. <sighs> Thank Cockman. Should you not have learned anything from her ambition and tenacity? Would your leash have feared solitude? Never. You have seen for yourself how readily she cloaked herself in it. Oh, how she would weep to see her favorite now. Were you not once the deadliest femme fatale in the land? Why, were I still the feisty vixen of my youth, I would have every last one of them drooling over me by now. Whew, you around your community wealth is all very well, but it seems to have dulled my edge. Shalal, get your worthless tail over there this instant! Of course, mistress! Is it time for breakfast already? How many eggs would you like today? None, of course. My fur is losing its glossy. I mean, <clears throat> the time has come to make a move! Uh, what move, mistress? Sometimes I wonder if you know me at all, Shalal. I am taking the fight straight to those invaders' home turf. Between my charms and a few cracks of my mouth, I'll have those brutes begging for mercy in no time. <laughs> Why? They'll be scrambling over themselves to eat out of my hand. <laughs> Please, mistress, don't leave me behind. There must be less reckless man we can... We? What on earth are you blabbering about? You'll not be coming. I have a very special job for you. Uh, and what would that be, mistress? Goodness, you are so slow, Shalotl. I hope you didn't think I gathered you those new eyes out of the goodness of my heart, did you? Hmm. Ugh. Ugh. I must have passed out. Where am I? Hey, you're finally awake. I was starting to think you might need a shot or three of my special elixir. <laughs> just pulling your leg. Ooh, you should have seen your face just now. Mm, I remember you. Dr. Shenong, right? In the flesh. The desirable, reliable, loved by everyone, Dr. Shenong, at your service. Try thinking twice before taking on another squad of giants. Doctor's orders. You die hard, though. Reminds me of someone. But I feel like I'm really dying. You got used to being someone's underdog. Getting beat up is kind of my specialty. <laughs> no, I mean more like... I don't mean physical toughness. You see, you're mostly squishy since you're picking his fifth skin. I'm talking more about your spirit. When you're surrounded by nothing but enemies, and they're all trying to get their kicks in. You'd probably get off easier if you just admitted your own weaknesses and gave in. You're a tough kid, you know that. Very unlike some folks I've known. Myself included. Sad, right? Shannon flashes a self deprecating grin. Mm. Saving me a good idea. Well, no wonder. No use crying over spilt milk. Anyway, since you're here, I was thinking we could have a little chat. You've piqued my interest. And besides, they have a saying in this Tokyo, don't they? That if you've already eaten the poison, you might as well lick the plate. 